You're listening to The World at Eight with Lynn Mozart. The World at Eight, the number one in nationalist news. Highlights of the news today, Monday 12th of January 2015. Russell Brand says Charlie Hebdo killer represent Islam like Bush and Blair represent Christianity. Oil hits six-year low as Goldman Sachs slashes price forecast. Rabble rousers, German minister urges anti-Islam rally to be cancelled. Arabs outraged over Israel's loyalty oath. Thought for the day, a bash in the knocker for lovers of Islam. And finally, two for one day Monday. UK News. Russell Brand says Charlie Hebdo killer represents Islam like Bush and Blair represent Christianity. Russell Brand has said devout Christians George Bush and Tony Blair represent Christianity no more than the Charlie Abdu terrorists represent Islam. In an uncharacteristically late blog on the killings in France that killed 17 people and three gunmen over three days, Brand said the bewildered, pitiable men who carried out the attacks do not speak for Islam or Muhammad or Allah. These men of murder are the symptom of a creed that lies as far away from God as is possible to conceive and do not represent Islam any more than George Bush, Tony Blair and Halliburton represented Christianity, he wrote. Or ordinary secular Europeans and Americans when they profited from the bombing of innocent Iraqis. World at eight. Oh boy, this retard is at it again. Why doesn't someone, preferably an an Islamic terrorist, blow him to kingdom come? The sad thing is, some people will listen to this crap and believe him. European news. Rabble rousers. German minister urges anti-Islam rally to be cancelled. The German minister has called on the organisers of the anti-Islam Asian Pegida rally to cancel their planned Monday demonstration out of respect for the victims of the Charlie Hebdo shootings and the three days of terror in Paris. If the organisers had a shred of decency, they would simply cancel these demonstrations, Germany's Justice Minister Heiko Maas told the Bild newspaper. The participants of the rally scheduled this Monday were asked to wear black armbands and observe a minute's silence to commemorate the victims of terrorism in Paris. World at eight. I'm trying to come to terms with Maas' ideology in lack of respect for the dead in a demonstration showing respect for the dead killed by Islamic terrorists. It simply does not make sense. World news. Arabs outraged over Israel's loyalty oath. Israel's Arab minority is decrying a new law that would force any new citizens who are not Jewish to pledge a loyalty oath to the Jewish and democratic state. Critics say the bill is yet another move intended to stifle dissent and marginalise the country's Arabs who feel or already feel like second-class citizens, the AP reports. The bill's defenders, who include Benjamin Netanyahu, say Israel must preserve its Jewish identity. The bill comes from Foreign Minister Avigdor Lieberman of the ultra-nationalist Israel Better New Party. Some speculate that Netanyahu is backing the bill to get Lieberman to acquiesce to concessions in the Palestinian peace talks. The cabinet shot down an earlier, harsher version of the bill, which would force even current citizens to take the oath, stripping them of that citizenship if they refused. World at eight. This sort of bill is endemic in many other countries like China and India, also unspoken in many anti-immigration countries. And I think it's quite right to expect something from immigrants who migrate to certain countries to undertake a loyalty oath to that country whilst they take everything else for granted. We need a similar bill in the UK. If the Arabs living in Israel don't like it, go somewhere else in the world. There are enough Muslim countries around the globe now to choose from. Netanyahu rules. Oil hit six-year low as Goldman Sachs slashes price forecast. Oil prices hit a six a new six-year low on Monday as Goldman Sachs, the bank that once predicted that the cost of a barrel would hit $200, lowered its forecast for crude. Brent oil, a global benchmark of crude blending from 15 North Sea fields, fell almost 3% at the start of trading to around $48 per barrel. Goldman Sachs earlier 
lowered its three-month estimate for Brent to $42 per barrel from a previous forecast of $80 and reduced U.S. crude to a price of $41. The bank warned that prices would have to remain close to $40 per barrel for some time in order to shut down a significant number of shale oil wells in the U.S., which OPEC and Saudi Arabia see as a threat to their market share. To keep all capital sidelined and curtail investment in shale until the market has rebalanced, we believe prices need to stay lower for longer, said the bank in a report. The search for the new equilibrium in oil markets continues. In 2008, Goldman Sachs argued that crude would reach $200 per barrel, but within months of its prediction, prices had crashed towards £40 per barrel with the onset of the global financial crisis. There are signs that U.S. oil drilling activity is beginning to slow. Baker Hughes claims that the oil rig count in the U.S. declined by 61 last week in the sharpest weekly fall since 1991. Thought for the day, a bash in the knocker for the Islamic lovies. Of course, all the news is centred around Paris and Islamic terrorism and the usual baloney about who, why or how it happened. The reason is simple. Despite the many injustices perpetrated against most civilizations throughout the thousands of years since we all crawled out of the primordial slime, there is one thing that has not been conducive to these forms of revenge. When one tribe killed or eliminated members of another tribe, they were not usually large members of the perpetrating tribe living within the tribe they were killing. Since going on biblical times, poor old Joshua raised several cities to the ground and killed even unto the animals to prevent revenge in the future. These lessons have not been learnt by modern so-called civilised society. They still kill and maim and reduce populations, but they do it in a more acceptable way, apparently. And what is the best way to alter the mindset of any population, apart from media propaganda and financial shenanigans? Bring in a massive amounts of peoples from foreign or many foreign cultures, and in short, blanket bomb that country over many years. Now, you see what I'm getting at. There are several effective ways to skin a cat, and in the plan, this is one of the most underrated and yet most effective way of bringing discontent and splitting a country that has ever been invented. Better and more acceptable than straightforward colonisation, it is colonisation on a huge scale, and all the more acceptable because it is all the West's fault, of course. I saw Foyle's War last night, and although excellent, the usual diversity culture remained with the Patriots and Jews being the bad boys, and the Arabs were, of course, squeaky clean. Now, there were several things wrong with this one. Firstly, the Patriots were the usual odious types, and yet the words they were uttering were totally modern day. And in fact, those feelings about migrants didn't really emerge until the intake of the West Indians in the early 50s, not at the end of the last war, when everyone was hungry and the country was ruined. Not me, though. I lived off the black market, mate so I was hunky-dory. As to the Jewish problem, few people even knew about Palestine, and those that did also did their utmost to stop what Jews survived in Europe from going anywhere, let alone a Jewish state, the UK or the US. No one wanted them, rather like the Palestinians today. No one wants them either, not even their own fellow Muslims. But I digress slightly, back to Paris and the huge demonstration in that city against Islamic terrorism, which I presume is not included in Liberté, Fraternité and something else. What did surprise me was that the Front National was stopped from attending this demonstration, which I think is nothing short of hateful, and an admission that the indigenous French could not even stand together in this Place de la Concorde over what is classed as the greatest act of terrorism they have ever had. And when you think that the French gladly handed over their Jews to the Third Reich without any qualms, then yup it is. This surely should have been a time when all patriots should have been together in this protest. If a people condemn Islamic terrorism without all the excuses and let-outs trumped out at these times, nationalists who have placed themselves on the front line of being classed as Islamophobes should also be allowed their say. As it was, it was a leftist demo which is in itself laughable, as it is the leftist mantra to allow and nay encourage all Muslims to come into Europe all the time, with no checks on the Schengen whatever, and certainly, apart from soup kitchens, a very blind eye to hitching lifts on lorries to the UK, to vanish without a buy or leave when here. Will Paris affect the immigration problems of this country? Will that become an election promise? 
Your guess is as good as mine, and that guess is no with capital letters. Camoron is already bringing up the rear with the growing elderly white population who are apparently causing all the hold-ups in the NHS emergency sections. Is this man seriously stupid or what? Most of the people he's speaking about don't go to the emergency wards because they would be dead by the time they're attended to. They go to their doctors or keep quiet and die at home. I would like to bet that if a film crew attended an emergency department in one of our large cities with a large migrant population, the unbiased truth would be that during the weekdays it is mainly ethnics and during the Fridays and weekends it will be the drunks and addicts of every description. But we no longer broadcast the truth as it would upset the racial harmony of this country. But of course, acts like Paris destroy the racial harmony of a country anyway. Now, France has always been awful in colonialism terms, as have the Belgians. But in France, at least in times of old, you could be another country, colour and be accepted. But of course, massive immigration destroys acceptance of differing ethnicities in any country. And that is the truth. Contrary to the diversity mantra, a plethora of foreigners does not a happy country make. A few, yes, a few genuine asylum seekers, yes, a sprinkling of the cosmopolitan is interesting and makes for a better society, but overdone it kills, it destroys, and it divides populations, and this is what Paris means. It also relates to us in the UK. The publicity given to British homegrown terrorists is a cover-up of the fact that we will be the next targets from Islamic terrorists who we have allowed and even educated ourselves with the ample help of various governments who don't want to be seen as racists. These Muslims will not stop. They have the blessing of the third world who, owing it to its birth rate, is more than taking over from the Western world, another point we should all be worried about. But like Islamic extremism, it will take a Hiroshima of an event more than 9-11 to alter our created mindset that we in the West deserve it. And cutting out patriots from planned events creates a two-tier problem. It accepts Islamic terrorism as being normal and paybacks as being an obligation. They are not. They are so wrong on so many levels. When will we take revenge on massive immigration, mainly from Muslim countries, which is fast destroying our way of life and even life itself? And finally, a two-for-one-day Monday. This is a complaint to Devon and Cornwall Police Force from an angry member of the public. Apparently, the actual email sent to the force and the reply is lengthy but brilliantly written. Dear Sir or Madam or Automated Telephone Answering Service, Having spent the last 20 minutes waiting for someone at Bodmin Police Station to pick up a telephone, I've decided to abandon the idea and try emailing you instead. Perhaps you would be so kind as to pass this message on to your colleagues in Bodmin by means of smoke signal, carrier pigeon or Ouija board. As I'm writing this email, there are 11 failed in medical experiments, I think you call them youths, in St Mary's Crescent, which is just off St Mary's Road in Bodmin. Six of them seem happy enough to play a game which involves kicking a football against an iron gate with the force of a meteorite. This causes an earth-shattering clang which rings through the entire building. This game is now in its third week, and as I'm unsure how the scoring system works, I have no idea if it will end any time soon. The remaining five failed abortions are happily rummaging through several bags of rubbish and items of furniture that someone has so thoughtfully dumped beside the wheelie bins. One of them has found a saw and is setting about a discarded chair like a beaver on ecstasy pills. I fear that it's only a matter of time before they turn their limited attention to the caravan gas bottle that is lying on its side between the two bins. If they could be relied on only to blow their own arms and legs off, then I would happily leave them to it. I would even go so far as to lend them the matches. Unfortunately, they're far more likely to blow up half the street with them, and I've just finished decorating the kitchen. What I suggest is this. After replying to this email with worthless assurances that the matter is being looked into and will be dealt with, why not leave it until the one night of the year, probably bath night, when there are no mutants around, then drive up the street in a panda car before doing a three-point turn and disappearing again. This will, of course, serve no other purpose than to remind us what policemen actually look like. 
I trust that when I take a claw hammer to the skull of one of these throwbacks, you'll do me the same courtesy of giving me a four-month head start before coming to arrest me. I remain your obedient servant. The reply. Mr. Blum, having read your email and understand your frustration at the problems caused by youths playing in the area and the problems you have encountered in trying to contact the police. As the community beat officer for your street, I would like to extend an offer of discussing the matter fully with you. Should you wish to discuss the matter, please provide contact details, address, telephone number, and when may be suitable. Regards PC blah blah blah, community beat officer. Dear PC blah blah, first of all, I would like to thank you for the speedy response to my original email. 16 hours and 38 minutes must be a personal record for Bodmin Police Station, and rest assured that I will forward these details to Norris McWhorter for inclusion, for inclusion in his next Guinness book. Secondly, I was delighted to hear that our street has its own community beat officer. May I be the first to congratulate you on your covert skills. In the five or so years I've lived in St Mary's Crescent, I have never seen you. Do you hide up a tree, or have you gone deep undercover and infiltrate the gang itself? Are you the one with the acne and the moustache on his forehead, or the one with the chin like a wash-hand basin? It's surely only a matter of time before you are head-hunted by MI5 to look for Osama. Whilst I realise that there may be far more serious crimes taking place in Bodmin, such as smoking in a public place or being Christian without due care and attention, is it too much to ask for a policeman to explain, using words of no more than two syllables at a time, to these twats that they might want to play their strange football game elsewhere? The pitch on Fair Park Road or the one at Priory Park are both within spitting distance, as in the bottom of the park dock, the latter being the preferred option, especially if the tide is in. Should you wish to discuss these matters further, you should feel free to contact me on blah, 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 blah. If after 25 minutes I have still failed to answer, I'll buy you a large one in the Cat and Fiddle pub. Regards. P.S. If you think this is sarcasm, think yourself lucky you don't work for the sewage department, with whom I'm also in contact. Love it. And a gem on politicians. All of them. Post Tortoise. As we approach the next general election, just keep this in mind. While stitching a cut on the hand of a 75-year-old farmer, whose hand was caught in the squeeze gate while working cattle, the doctor struck up a conversation with the old man. Eventually, the topic got around to politicians and their role as our leaders. The old farmer said, well, I see it. Most politicians are post-tortoises. Not being familiar with the term, the doctor asked him what a post-tortoise was. The old farmer said, when you're driving down a country road and you come across a fence post with a tortoise balanced on top, that's a post tortoise. The old farmer saw the puzzled look on the doctor's face, so he continued to explain. You know, he didn't get up there by himself. He doesn't belong up there. He doesn't know what to do while he's up there. He's elevated beyond his ability to function, and you just wonder what kind of dumbass put him there to begin with. Best explanation of a politician I have ever heard. You've been listening to The World at Eight. I am Lynn Mozart, and I wish you all a very good night.